Hey, what's going on, people? Glendon Cameron again with a burner of a video. Total, total burner of a video. Number one, how do you make money without a job? How do you start a business in 2014 with no cash? Hold on for just a second. I'm going to drop that knowledge. I'm going to let you know everything that I know about that subject in just a minute. Be sure to get my free audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Keeping Your Mind for Success. And there's two things. Actually, that was four, but it's really two. Two. The deal is uh, the 50 laws of hustling, law 1 through 14, are done. Still beta phase, but I'm opening that up. That's below. That's a special deal. I'm opening up a special workshop for that. So if you're on the email list, you already know about it. If not, get on the email list. Also, it's garage sale season, pre-season. For most of the country, garage sale season is literally around the corner. 60 days away. Get ready now. Get my book, How to Make $1,000 to $2,000 at Your Next Garage Sale. The book will help you buying and it'll help you on the selling tip. And with that, I'm going to drop what you want to hear because this is exactly what I do to make a living. Here's the question. How do you start a business with no money in 2014? I'm going to tell you. Start in that business. And I know before you go like, oh, that's just really, really easy. No, no, no. No, I'm going to really give you some magic jelly beans. Psych! No magic jelly beans. In 2009, July 17th, I took my first step in starting my internet business. Internet business that I currently run right now literally changed my life the money did not come for many months after I started the business that is the problem that many of you yard rats have an issue with if I work today I need to have money today if I don't have money today I will not work today you are short sighting you're just shortchanging yourself you're shortchanging yourself because there's something called sweat equity and there's also something that's really, really pivotal that happens when you start a business. You get information that you would not get if you don't start a business. My goal in 2009, July 17th, wrote it down. I want to write one book. I want to make $50,000 and I thought I was going to sell it to a publisher. What happened was, the story was, what happened was when the one-legged man walked into the bar, well, you'll have to wait on that, is I jumped into this pool of information, business, fuck-ups that I had no earthly knowledge would happen. There was so many things that went on that I was totally unprepared for. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because I ended up writing 13 more books. The goal was to write one and then write some mystery book. If I did not start that business, I would have never gotten those lessons. There are many of you who are sitting on the fence like, am I going to get started? Um... Uh, Maybe next year. Maybe when I get my tax return. Maybe when the kids are older. Maybe, maybe, fuck, maybe. You are not going to do it. Unless you get started, you are missing out. So how do you start a business in 2014 with no money? You fucking get started. That's it. That's the magic jelly bean. I know some of you are going, what? Wait a minute. I thought you were going to like pull out like a magical chinchilla or something. No, no, no. Get started. Fuck up and fail. Because the one of my best selling books, you know, Pimp and Craigslist for Fun and Profit, I had no intention of writing that book. It came from a webinar. I was on the webinar, one of the first webinars I ever did, to my storage auctions, and I said, Craigslist is a great outlet for storage auction stuff. And people are like, well, really? Because you know, in my main book. Uh, making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions. It was just like a, a, you know, just a little bit. I gave, you know, what I thought was enough to get people to start it. And then people were like, hey, you know, uh, 
I would really like another book about Craigslist. So I wrote it. And for a while, that book was actually doing better than the storage auction book. Now, this is the thing. That book took me a week to write. I learned so much from writing that first book and that second book and that third book. And I've, there's some books I wrote that I didn't put out because they were not applicable to what was going on. Because by the time I was writing them, the conditions changed. It made no sense. And I still have people who, who want that eBay book, you know, uh, eBay, the Black Ops edition. That shit will get you kicked off just like that. You can't do that. You just can't like putting your URL in your t in text on your photos. Oh, I did that shit for years. They didn't even know what was hitting them. So understand, if you want to start a business, you have to really concentrate on getting started. Because the first reiteration of your business may not be the final product. I did not see the Hustlers Mindset Project coming. I didn't see this YouTube channel growing to almost 3 million views. Probably would be there before the end of the month. I didn't see damn near 10,000 subscribers. I didn't see selling 15,000 books. I didn't see none of that when I got started. What happened was, when I got started, I jumped into the deep end of the pool. And in the deep end of the pool, two things happen. You either swim or you sink. And I'm not a sinker. You know, all this body fat, you know, it kind of makes me float a little bit, just a little bit. But as I got in, I got deeper and deeper and deeper and something happened. It was like, I can really make it in this environment. Because that's another thing that many of you are scared about. Leaving your weekly paycheck, and I'm not advising you to quit your job and start a business. There are people on this channel who can testify that I actually talked them out of quitting their jobs to go do full storage auctions full time. So there's several people. I was like, no, 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 no. You have health insurance, you have benefits, and that wife of yours is probably going to bitch slap you. You quit your job to do this. It's a learning process. When I got in the storage auction business, I had another business. I was accustomed to not getting paid every week. So I went in with a different mindset. Actually, the storage auction business got me paid quicker than my office furniture business. I mean, cash flow was much faster, but I was already predisposed to business. And you're not going to get predisposed to business like, I'm going to sit on the fence until conditions get better. Conditions are not going to get better, bitch. Conditions are going to get more murky, more disruptive, more crazy. The conditions are not going to get better. You have to make conditions better because if you don't make conditions better you're going to be 60 years old 70 years old 80 years old 90 years old sitting wherever you may be sitting at that point in your life going what the fuck happened where's my pretty girlfriend where are the grandkids where's the American dream fuck I mean you're going to be that motherfucker because your habits, and this is something I told a friend today, because he was like really, really busy and she wants to get married. And I was like, look, your life is too fucking jam-packed for you to meet anybody of substance. No dude, she's like, no, I disagree. If I meet the right dude, I'll make the time. No the fuck you will not. You are a creature of habits. If you have a habit of not being, going out there and starting businesses or not taking risk, you will continue to nourish that habit. That's why a lot of people who are like super busy can't find anybody because they don't make room for people to enter their lives. You have not made room for your business idea to start because I have friends been on for years and they finally started these businesses because they made the choice to start the business. Because, you know, I'll tell you, Conundrum Publishing, 2009, 2009 and the thing is, you know, everyone's talking about all this silly stuff like, you know, because I'm just going to incorporate what I'm doing this year. And you're like, well, well, you should get. No, no, no. I'm selling books. I'm selling books. I didn't have a warehouse. I didn't have employees. I didn't have none of that stuff. That's one of the silly Jedi mind tricks that you play on yourself before you validate your business, before you incorporate, before you 
do any of this silly stuff, even before you get some fucking business cards, you need to learn if what you have will fucking sell. You need to get your first coin. You need to get some you know, that first sale, that second sale, that third sale. You that is the sustainability model. That if you present your service, you present your product, and someone says, "Here's cash or my credit card," that's sustainable. All that other stuff. It's just fucking theory until you take it out of the theory room and put it in the real world and the real world either goes boo or bravo, bravo, throwing roses at your ass, bravo. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. So how do you start a business in 2014? You fucking get started. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's you know dumping uh, tails on donkeys. There might be a market for it. You won't know until you get it. And like, okay, you know, you're laughing, right? You're laughing like, you know, Glendon lost his damn mind. You're laughing. But see, this is the thing. But that guy, the Sherpa, he's out in that field. And he's dumping donkey tails. And then he's looking down and he's like, oh, damn. There's this valuable ore. And it's literally all over the ground. And then he's like, he stops dumping those donkey tails. Next thing you know, he's up on his fucking yacht because he recognized that this ore, because no one wanted to go out there and thump those donkey tails. They're like, mm, I ain't doing that. And the donkeys needed their tails thumped, okay? Because it makes them feel good about themselves. They were feeling some kind of way before they got those tails thumped. So the Sherpa, he's thumping tails. He looked down and he literally saw money on the ground. But if he wasn't out there thumping donkey tails, he never would have saw the ore. You have to get involved with something. Start anything, and it'll lead you down the path to something else. Maybe something better, something greater. It's like that, and that's the way it is. And for those Run DMC fans, you know what I'm talking about. Because I see so many people who are afraid to step out on action, who are afraid to do something different, do something new, set themselves up for success because they're afraid of failure. Failure is a part of life. Every time when you were a little bitty bitty baby and you got from crawling and you started pulling up on stuff and walk, for weeks you failed at walking. But you were like, I'm gonna get my big headed ass up here and I'm gonna walk because I'm gonna strut. Because no one told you you weren't supposed to win. You just kept doing it and you kept doing it and kept doing it. And one day you were walking, then another day you were running. And that's how business works. So as you were out there in YouTube land or, you know, there, there's some people out there in YouTube land and there's some people who are living in scaredlittlebitchville.com. It's, it's a dot com. It's zip code zero, 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 because there are no returns and there's no dividends in scared little bitchville. There's a whole bunch of and there's a lot of and, you know, I didn't get my damn jelly beans and. I ain't getting no pussy. I mean, there's a whole bunch of wanting and hurting and all kind of crazy shit in Scared Little Bitchville. Don't be a resident of Scared Little Bitchville. I'm telling you, the benefits, the, 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 how, the, the property taxes are entirely too high. The street service, municipal services, just garbage, man. Just garbage. Do not become a resident. And if, if you are in Scared Little Bitchville, understand you can get out. You just open the door to your residence and scare a little bitch, Phil. And just open it. Start walking. And, like, and walk through that door. Go down the stairs. Get on the street. And walk the fuck out of there. That's it. Because if you stay in there, you're going to be that 90-year-old... Well, what the fuck? I, that's going to be you. And you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, Glendon, you put up this stuff, you're not free. I am full of fear. I have fear. I have fear every day. I put up videos. I'm like, is this shit gonna land? Oh nope, it didn't land. They're going like, ah, oh, we don't like that shit. I put out books. I got a book uh, under a pen name. No, I'm not telling you my damn pen name. Stop fucking asking. And um, that shit didn't do nothing. I was just like, oh god, that no one likes it. And then a book that I put out under you know same pen name. I thought when I put the publish button and KDP, I was like, man, I don't know about this. Sucker took off. And, you know, you are not going to find out what is your magic jelly bean until you start digging and planting seeds and doing shit. Because, understand, conditions are not 
going to get better. Someone asked me, it's like, Glenda, why did you rebrand your channel and you with this, you know, how to make a living without a job, how to start a business? I'll tell you why. Based on my thoughts and research, because I'm, I'm highly data driven on certain things, the certain things are emotional. I see in the next five to 10 years, there's going to be a magnitude of people who are just not going to find decent employment. And what I mean by decent employment, that you can work one job and it's enough money for you to pay your bills, pay your rent or mortgage, car payment, pay all of your bills. And after everything is set and paid and you live by yourself, that you can still save 20, 30 percent of your income. To me, that's a decent job, whatever that may be. And I'm not giving you numbers because numbers don't mean anything, because that decent job may be 40 grand in boot bowls ass Montana. And that decent job may be 180 in New York City. You know, it, it just really depends on where you are, what you do and what you want. But. From what I see, and I, I'm having these, you know, I'm rubbing the crystal ball. I'm rubbing that bitch. I'm rubbing it. It's getting warm, too. Feels good. Feels good. And I just see the future that there are going to be many people who are just like you right now who are living in scary little bitch field. And a tornado or maybe a crop of locusts, a swarm of locusts, is going to come in scary little bitch field. And you're not going to leave scary little bitch field because you want to. No, 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 no. Nope. You will be forced out. Just like I was way back when, when I got laid off three times in one year, I was forced to change my mindset. I was forced to change how I engage with the world or I was going to be probably a street person. I'm be just straight up honest with you. I was depressed. I was hurting. I was alone. I see how people, that person, because I don't judge those people I see on the street because I know how easy it is to end up in that position because I was like that fucking close to pushing a cart. Because this is what happens, and I'll give you the thought process. You work your ass off, right? And shit doesn't work out. And you do it again and again and again. And life just keeps... Mm, mm. Then one day, you start, you start flinching. You start flinching. Then one day, you realize that if you get really low... You don't have to flinch because it's not going to hit you because they don't come down that low. And you get lower and lower and lower. Then one day you just say, fuck it. you just like, fuck it. I live on the street. It's less stress. Next thing you know, you're pushing that fucking cart. It can happen. That's why I do what I do because I know what's waiting on my ass if I just get complacent or feel, because I know that, you know, there's some of you out there who really love my black ass and thank you. Really appreciate you. And there's other ones of you out there, you little fuckers who can't stand me. Every time a video comes up, even before the video is even, you even watch it, you're like hitting this like and shit. And I giggle at your ass because guess what? You're giving me a view which counts towards my total. I don't care if you watch this bitch for five seconds. That shit counts towards my total, which pushes me up in the YouTube. So even though you're hating on me, you are helping me because you don't understand how the system works. What's the saying? Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. And you motherfuckers don't know the rules. So even though you hate me, you are helping me, which makes me giggle like a girl. I'll admit it. <laughs> Just giggle like a girl every morning because it's his shit. But the real deal is anyone can fall. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to go to bed with your mouth hurting because your teeth are fucked up. I know what it's like to go through days, weeks, and months of that shit. It's not pretty. I don't wish that on any of you out there. Even those fuckers I hate. I don't wish that shit on any of you because it's going to do something to you. Either you're going to win or you're just going to be pushing that fucking cart. I'm serious. It is that easy because depression is a motherfucker. Depression is a bitch. And a lot of people don't understand that you must manage your emotional expectations because that's one of the reasons I subscribe to Agent Philosophy. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Just kind of stay in the middle and learn to manage your emotions so your emotions aren't managing you. Many of you are led by your emotions, like that uh, video on my other channel talking about the dude in Tulsa who beat this dude damn near to death. And people like, if it was me, I'd do the same thing. You're a fucking fool if you're going to invite someone into your house, beat them with some brass knuckles. For the uninitiated, that's called premeditated felony assault. 
you know, you know that that's just really fucking lowbrow. You know, for any of you fuckers who want to do that shit, you just speak to your intellect because how can you protect your kids if you're in jail? You can't. Molest, you know, Chester the molester gonna have fun with your kids. But back on point. Get started. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not when the kids are grown. Not when you know your divorce is final. Learn to build some fucking strength in the middle of chaos and push your shit to the world. Now, let's one other thing. There's a lot of profanity in this video. Uh, let me just be real clear. I'm not a fucking professional. I am not a fucking professional. I am not trying to get some corporate gig. I have turned down a reality show. Fuck you. If me saying fuck you, me using the word shit, me saying penis, me saying all of this stuff, you know, like a sexy chinchilla, if shit like that makes you go, the profanity, oh my God. Whoo, I can't deal with that. Let me tell you something. The big penis in the sky is going to rip you apart. And you're going to wish that you had listened to that little brown guy that was cussing so much and took some of that advice to heart. Because I've got a track record now. All my predictions, do they come true? Nope. But I'm batting fucking 90%. I live with that shit. And I'm telling you, this shit is coming. It's going to get harder and harder to find a decent job. And the only way that you can circumvent that if you create your own decent job i.e. start your own business there is no risk to being an entrepreneur like it used to be there's a risk to getting a job and not having any other marketable skill sets and I have several people that were they're in my reseller group which is shut you know I just like they get along they really contribute no one else can join they um I've seen the stories it's like man you know I got laid off but they didn't get laid off and land into nothingness. They got laid off and they just like, I'm just going to expand my hustle. Uh, some people had their hustle going on for two, three years. And I'm very proud of that because the number is about 90 people that I've substantially helped in the last five years. I feel very proud of that. You know, it's not a thousand, eighty million people, but those 90 people, shit means a lot. And then there's another group that just from this channel have changed their lives. That's some awesome shit. So I'm going to keep cussing. And, you know, if you are offended by the word fuck, fuck you. If you are offended by the word pussy, you're probably one. And if you're offended by any level of profanity to the point that you can't hear anything else, you are one weak minded little bitch. Yeah, I said it. And don't really care. Because the thing is, in terms of what I do here on YouTube, in terms of my category, I'm in the top percent with my cussing ass. How is that? Because the shit works. The shit works. If you take the advice and put action with it, the shit works. So you can be lulled into some kind of complacency by, you know, listen to someone who doesn't cuss and isn't rough and rugged around the edges and makes you feel good about your sorry ass by saying it's okay to be mediocre. It's okay to underperform. It's okay to not really give a shit about your life to the point that you're working seven days a week to make a better life for you and your family. It's okay. I'm not that guy. I would say, you know what? You're fucked up. If you think starting a business is something that you're going to do in four hours a week and go sit on the beach with some fake breasted bimbo and drink pina coladas while some sexy chinchilla rubs you on your fat belly, you're at the wrong channel. You should unsubscribe and go find some of that shit and just enjoy your life. You really should. You really should. So that's it. <laughs> if you're not overly offended at this video if uh, you still are here then I've got an Easter egg for you yes there's an Easter egg at the end of this video and oh as always do not tell people about the freaking Easter egg okay it's for you for you motherfuckers that made it this far it's for you don't tell nobody it's an Easter egg it's just for you so this is the Easter egg. This is what's going on. So take advantage. Easter eggs don't last forever because they're eggs and they go bad. So you have to do something with them. But this is the Easter egg for you. Enjoy. 
And with that, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.